So in our last video, we're shooting 6.5 Creedmoor out of an AR-10, and we're working with the 130 grain Burger AR Hybrid OTM Tactical and loading it with Vitavori N555. In the last video, we were testing a bunch of overall lengths, and we happened to shoot a tiny little group. This 0.34 inch group was at 2.080 inches of overall length. So today I want to load a 10 shot group of that exact same load just to verify what we saw last time. And I want to load two groups shorter and two groups longer. Very small increments, only three thousandths of an inch of overall length. So that's the basic test. I mean, sizing die is set up and locked down. We've got our seating die figured out. So not a whole lot to talk about here with loading. Other than just to mention again what a, like this was, this has been a confusing couple of videos, especially with these Wilson dies, which aren't really the right tool for the application. So I haven't done a really good job of explaining, you know, some of the subtleties here. So if you've been a little bit confused with the dies, don't worry about it. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about these and loading with this type of process later and the alternatives. Like I saw somebody had mentioned that they use a Redding body die and a Lee collet neck die. That's another good combination that kind of fits back into a little bit of what we've been talking about. But like I said, it's just been poorly explained, poor, poorly discussed, and I don't want to bore you with it right now. Nobody's going to be watching this part three video anyway, right? Unless you've been following along, that is. Now, what they're going to miss out on is the most interesting test of the day. So this is the third video where we've shot this N555 powder. And our charge weight for today is going to be 43.1 grains. Well, in the first video, that gave 2668 feet per second. And in the second video, it gave 2627. So we lost like 40 feet per second. And I think it might be due to humidity. Because first video, I had just opened this brand new can of powder and it happened to be a rainy day. And whenever I was done loading, I went ahead and left the powder out. I think it was overnight. So it was, it was in a humid environment for about 24 hours before I put it back in the bottle. So I think that's why we lost velocity in the last video. So what I did at the end of the last video was I put the powder into this jar with these humidity packs. If it'll focus, you'll see it says 32%. So this is a 32% humidity environment that this powder's been in for a little over 40 hours. So not quite two days. So if the guess that humidity is our culprit is correct, we should see velocities come back up. I don't know, like, will they come back up to about where we were in the first test? Will they go even higher? I don't know. Now, if you're curious about this like I am, be sure to check out a couple videos by Bolt Action Reloading. He's already done a little bit of investigation on this and finding some interesting stuff. So that's what led me to buy like these humidity packs and stuff. I've got a bunch of different humidity levels and we're gonna be able to test a powder more thoroughly than we are today. But that'll come in the future. This is a good first test. So I'm gonna be you know, using the same charge weight, 43.1 grains. Somebody had brought up, so does hum humid powder weigh more than dry powder? And that's something that bolt action reloading has already looked at a little bit. So I'll get to that later. So today, which I'm going to wait until I'm done with sizing my brass before I open that. I did, I did store it in a, in a, a dark place. I put it in an ammo can. Actually, I wasn't sure if light would have some effect as well. So that's our powder. I'm extremely interested to see what happens there. So is that it? I mean, I think that covers our test today. Should be a pretty quick video. Like, do we even need to see any reloading stuff? We've been through it twice already. I'm going to use the 288 bushing in our die like I did last time. Otherwise, everything's the same. I don't know. We'll see. If something I want to talk about pops in my mind, I'll flip on the camera. But otherwise, I'm, we might just go straight to the range. All right, folks, the target is at 100 yards. I'm using the Shot Marker electronic target system. The gun is a 20 inch ballistic advantage barrel with a 1 and 8 twist. Silencer Co. Omega suppressor. Velocities with the Lab Radar chronograph. Same as always. So I had seven bullets left over and I went ahead and loaded those up into some other brass just to fire form it, use it for ciders. And this will be our first look at the velocity with the dried out powder. So let's, let's shoot a quick three shot group to check things out and double check our zero. First velocity is 2644. Let's go ahead and keep shooting. Okay, I like that start. So our three velocities were 2644, 
2651 and 2677. So it was climbing each time there. It's pretty cold today. Like as I was setting up, it's it was in the 30s. It's probably in the in the 40s right now as I'm shooting. So I don't know. Even even considering that, like that's a pretty pretty big swing there. But none of them were as low as the 2627 average we saw in the last video. So I think we're on to something. So let's go ahead and take advantage of our warm gun. And I'm going to go ahead and load all 10 rounds in the magazine. Let me clear our target. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, that's not the start I was hoping for. Let's keep going, see what happens. Oh, but for a single shot, it's not that often we screw it up on the very first shot. Man, it was stacking them in there. All right, what was it without that first one? 0.56 inches. Nine shots into 0.56 inches. So what happened to that first one? Something about first round off a full magazine? Who knows? Okay, 1.21 inches, best nine was 0.56. Velocity was 26.57. Standard deviation six. Extreme spread of 17. So we picked up almost all of our velocity again. So video one, we're 2668. Video two, we're all the way down to 2627. And now we're back up to 2657. So 11 feet per second below the first video. Interesting stuff. You know, maybe, yeah, who, who knows? But we got so much more investigation to do on that subject. All right, 10 shots, reasonably fast. I'm going to go ahead and let the gun cool down for just a second before we move on. So my order of shooting today is just weird, right? So the next two groups are going to be the shorter ones. So last group was 2.675. The next five is going to be 2.672. Now to test the 10 rounds in the magazine theory, I've loaded up the next 10 rounds. So the first five off the magazine will be the first group. And hopefully I can remember to start shooting another group on the sixth shot. You guys remind me. Screwed it up on the last shot, didn't I? No, not too bad. 0.53 inches. Okay, 0.53 inches, velocity 2663, standard deviation 11.0, extreme spread of 28. All right, let's move right along before this one has too much more time to cook in the chamber. A little bit of a break here. So I'm getting some wind gusts that I need to wait out every couple shots. It's not too bad. We've got a little bit of a velocity drop there, 2648, standard deviation 10.9. But man, the group sizes are hilarious. 0.54, another great group. But if we take if we take away that first shot, our nine shot group was a 0.56, and then we've got a 0.53 and a 0.54. All right, I'm gonna give the gun a minute. Gonna rest my eyes for a few minutes before we move on to the to the longer rounds. We're gonna go a little bit longer with overall length. You know what I would be thankful for? I would be thankful for two more half inch groups. Next up, 2.678 inches. I want to feed these the same way. I went ahead and put the next 10 rounds in the magazine. Let's see what happens.
Well, our good standard deviation is back. So velocity 2658, standard deviation 5.6. 0.45 inch group, just awesome. Just absolutely awesome. Okay, 2.681. Okay, that was 26.55, 12.4 standard deviation, and a 0.68 inch group. Our worst of the day, 0.68. I'll take it. All right, let's get packed up. Let's get back to the bench. So here's the most confusing thing to me. So this is our first, our first group. This is our 10 shot group, and then these are our five shot groups. These are the ciders. So all of our five shot groups shot to a pretty consistent point of impact, but that first group is lower and then through that one high. Could that really be related to overall length? Or is something else going on there? Like marksmanship wise is what I'm thinking, like a different you know, alignment. Like my shooting position was just different and I basically pulled them all low. That would be a remarkably consistent screw up to do. You know, like I, I don't even really have a good theory as to what might cause something like that. Instead of my normal stickers today, you know, I just shot at these little red, uh, these little black Sharpie dots and that Vortex Viper PST scope does have pretty heavy, you know, crosshair lines. So maybe it was a, a sight picture alignment sort of thing, but I don't think so. Like that was 10 shots. How, yeah, I don't know if that was a screw up. It was a remarkably consistent screw up, except for the one, the first shot, right? Yeah, I don't know. This, this is all very confusing. And as far as analyzing these groups, where our smallest is a 0.45 inch, and then the biggest is a 0.68, I mean, maybe, you know, maybe that 6.8 is getting to a point where we can confidently say like, yeah, that was probably starting to open up. Like, I'm not a good enough shooter to tell the difference between these three, I don't think. Now, if the point of impact of this first group was, was normal, like let's say we had, you know, nine of the 10 shots went right in this same spot as the others, I would say, man, we're in good shape. We're in a very forgiving range of overall length and all the way from 2.669 out to 2.681 is shooting consistent. But can't say that because that, I mean, it's not much. We're talking a quarter of an inch lower than the others, but that's a lot when the groups start getting small. Well, here's what I definitely do know. This gun really loves this bullet or at least it seems to, you know, we've only tried one powder, so it's hard to jump that hastily to such a conclusion. But in my experience, if we find one powder that shoots like this, there's probably some others, but this is going to make for a great baseline load for this gun. I think, you know, if we're off screwing around with other bullets and nothing at all seems to be going right and the groups are terrible, we can always come back and maybe shoot a group of these to check our system, build our confidence again. And I had somebody reach out who said they had a couple thousand of these and didn't mind sending me a couple hundred. I've been rejecting all of those sorts of requests lately because I've got so many bullets on hand, interesting bullets, you know, like tests I really need to get to. And plus it's a little bit aggravating testing and making videos on these when they haven't been available for a while. So I'm not sure in, in the short term, I'm definitely done. We got, we got to move on to some other things, but I'm looking forward to more testing with these bullets, man, they're expensive even when you can buy them. That, that was the nice thing about my Thompson Center Compass in 6.5 Creedmoor, is it loved the generic 140 grain boat tail hollow point from Hornady, which is one of the you know least expensive match bullets we can get. So maybe this barrel is just gonna have more expensive tastes. But the thing is, we really haven't tested that much with this barrel to even characterize how picky it's gonna be. All right, I'm rambling and talking in circles. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Hope you enjoyed the triumphant return of Target Camera. I am going to start integrating a target camera back in sometimes, kind of like you saw today. That's, that's why, well, you don't need to know all the stupid details, but here, here's the crazy part. Like I meant to have target camera for all of my groups today, but those last two groups where I didn't include the video, I had accidentally pointed my camera at these two dots instead of these two dots. So that, that sort of frustration will, continue to plague me, I'm sure, but that's okay because target camera is not what it's all about anymore. It's all about shot marker and it's always going to be like, that's the meat. 
real-time group sizes coming in, super duper flexible about removing shots and seeing what group sizes would have been, I would not want to go back to working without shot marker. So it's here to stay, get used to it. And every once in a while, I'll have the target camera like we did today, where we can see some holes get punched in paper. Because that's fun, and it's kind of cool. I agree with you guys there. All right, I think that's it for today. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving. See you next time.